Hey guys, here we are, the Quick and Out MMA podcast. This is episode 23, the BKFC 14 special. We've got Kevin Smith, and I know everybody's going to say that's not Kevin Smith, but if you don't know who that is, you haven't been watching this sport long enough. And the one and only Britton Hart. How are we doing, guys? How are we feeling tonight? Just a few days out from fight. Feeling good. Feeling good, guys. Ready. So I appreciate you taking the time more than anything, really, because. Here we are, we're literally three days away from the fight, and the fact that you're even taking the time for an interview kind of shows where your mindset is, that you're just kind of, you seem so relaxed and so chill. Like, how do you keep in that mindset knowing that, you know, three days away from, you know, busting hands and faces? I think that, you know, know we've got to go out and, and, and work, work really hard. hard. We're like, here's, here's the days, days that we're going to bust our ass, ass and work as hard as we can. We're going to grind, 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 grind. And then, you know, and we, we have, have to schedule, schedule like, this is our last hard day. day. And, and then, you know, know the, the last few days, days have all been about stretching, relaxing, keeping the sharp, keeping the technical, and just keeping it in good spirit. So I've been in the gym all day, Monday, all day, Tuesday, so it's still a long day, but... I've been, I've been around great people, people working, working on stuff in and out. Um, and I help train, train a bunch of kids. kids. I help train, train some other females in the gym. I, I work, work with a guy that day. I said I was fast enough to catch his hands. And I had to do them wrong. So <laughs> it's been some fun, <laughs> some fun <laughs> competition. And, and just, you know, and being, being in good spirits. And, you know, this game has got me in the middle. So I'm surrounded, surrounded by the best people right, right now. now. And, and so, so that's, it's, it's easy for me to relax. I did my part. I worked hard. I put my body through torture on hard days. So now it's all about keeping it keeping it together and loose and destruction and you know, being ready. So being ready, being on time. When you're ready and on time, things happen. I don't. That was not a dig at anybody else on the show for showing up later. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> so, for all of you who don't know, the owner of Smith Brothers Combat, you do so many things, Kevin, that I literally had everything written down and forgot it all already. So, um, kind of introduce yourself to those who don't know you. Um, I'm still laughing about somebody challenging Britain uh, about catching hands. Um, so <laughs> talk a little bit about yeah, what you... video. <laughs> so good. That's fun. I, I would, would like to see that. that. Uh, I've been there for that, that one. Watch Britain. Uh, take, take care, care of the guy. guy. What, what do I do? I, I, I got, got in. I was a fanboy, man. I got in. I watched, watched uh, BKFC, BKFC one, one and, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, then, then started, started stalking Jay Feldman and, 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 started started and, 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 and blowing up his phone and say, man, I have to be a part of this. I sent my resumes. Sort of my medical, medical background, I ran operations, I said it all, and uh, I said, I, I can do whatever you want me to do, and he uh, he brought, brought me on board, we haven't looked back, and he's been, uh, it's turned into family, family. Uh, uh, whatever they want done, I, I get done, I started off really as a medical director, but now the sport's growing, um, as the sport's growing, we've, we've upped the ante quite a bit, uh, we brought in uh, Tommy Sponza from New York, Mr. And we've uh, brought in um, uh, Muzzy, Dr. Muzzy, uh, who is a neuro guy and uh, does a lot of work with brain injuries and CTE. So we've upped our game. So uh, my role as medical director is probably being pushed out a little bit, but I'm there for whatever they need at all, and, and they know that. Uh, and then on the second start, uh, you know, I've been, I've been always involved with fighters, um, and, and helping them out on sponsoring and doing this and that. I just think, you know, I'm, I'm going to go get, get, get my license, so I'm going to go to school, and I'm going to learn more about sports management, because, because I saw a lot of fighters getting just taken advantage of, of um, guys coming in, companies coming in and saying, well, you know, here's sign here, we'll manage you, and you give us 20%, and and they're advertising some stuff on Facebook. It's not the real deal. And that's what we're doing. We're creating a family um, among, among the family, so everyone in Bear Huck was already feels like one, and, and now Smith Brothers together, we've got our team. Uh, in, in my opinion, it's one of the strongest teams out there. Um, we've, we've got, got the, the strongest girl out there. We've got, got uh, Tyler, Tyler Goodjohn, we've got Lorenzo, who's, who's a beast, beast. we've all seen that. that. And, and I can go, go down the list, Bobo, Van, and Jason Fish. I mean, there's 30 people now. It's crazy. No, when I said woman, that's Britt, that's the only girl. That's, that's our only girl. girl. That's, that's, that's the way it's for now. now. We got we got just a little bit, but uh, it, it is a family. We we uh, we're, we're gonna. This will, will help us. Uh, my job is to go get, get some sponsors. But, but as we get larger, we're gonna get doors to deals from large companies, and then we can share that wealth. And that's kind of what we're doing. 
Um, right, right now, now we, we, we talk, talk, personally, I'm talking to some really, really uh, large, large corporate companies. companies. Um, and and I, at, at the same, same time, I try to help them bring it in for Barrett. If, if I, I can bring a little bit of money in for them, um, then it's, 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 it's it pays, pays it all the way, way around. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a mutually beneficial thing because if you're bringing in money for your fighters and for the organization, that's got to trickle back uh, to your fighters. And I mean, I've seen all your signings and watching them one by one by one by one. And it's amazing because you're right. There's so many managers who just walk over and go, sign here, do this. I'm going to take 20%. And yeah, that's it. So I'm going to switch it over to Britain. What's it like well, having... Oh, one more, oh. One more. Britain received my contract, and in, in the contract, she can she she say, say perhaps, yeah, absolutely. In, in the contract, it's not a first set of contracts, contract, it's, it's, it's an agreement. agreement. And, and it states in there, there if, if I don't do everything listed that I say that I'm going to do for you, you don't pay me. It doesn't, it doesn't say, say the partial, partial payment, payment or, but you don't, don't pay me. And that's, I'm, I'm not in, in, I'm in for the money. This, this, is, this is, is not about getting uh, 10% of $2,000. This, this is, is about building the sport, building the fighters. And if I'm not doing a good job, don't pay, pay me, walk, walk away. And that's, and that's it. it. And that's what nobody else is going to do. So that's what I've dedicated to all my fighters that they've got. Where I worked on last night, they know I'm giving it everything. So. Well, yeah, for sure. So, Britton, I'm going to let you jump in on, on what he said because you're just smiling from ear to ear. So, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, coming from someone you know, I'm kind of the same. It's kind of cool that me and Kevin have that in common because I actually went to school for sport management. And then instead of the same thing, like, you know, especially being a female, not only a fighter, but a female, so many people think that they can take advantage and walk over and that you're just so naive. And when I started, I kind of had learned the hard way. And I said I was never going to go do that again and that, you know, I do the sport for the passion and the love to be the best I can be in it, not to, you know, just make a quick buck. I think when you take shortcuts and stuff like that, that's when people really mess up and it is fail. When you do it the right way, that's where the longevity comes from. And, and so, so just, just to hear Kevin talk about, about that just makes me smile because it, it feels, feels good, good to know that people look at the longevity of sport rather than, oh, what can I use this person for in a short amount of time to make it what I got, you know? And I just think that it goes to, like, using the word and the term family. And, you know, it, it's kind of like a mutual beneficial thing. You know, I had a manager before tell me, see this piece of paper? I owe you now. It's like we're married. And then it was like, I mean, uh Jeez. Yeah, it gets really hard for me to, like, you know, you can see I've been a little bit everywhere. It's because, you know, I'm always looking for the good flags and then the red flags. So you got to be careful when, when you're in the business and in any kind of management kind of group. You know, those, those are the things. You know, and I feel like I look at this, which I think we were talking about earlier in, in, in pre-conversation, not in this interview, but things that are behind the scenes, you know, when, when you sign an agreement and have a job, like, those are the things that you got to abide by. You got to show up at this time, this way, that is your job. And I look at it as an agreement, like, with me and Kevin, like, he gives me this girl, doesn't matter who it is, what the, what the situation is, I have a job, go in there. And, and knock her out and win. And I take my job serious. So to just know that the manager and the people out there take their jobs are serious, it's just, I mean, it kind of it shows the pride and passion in the sport all together. And I really don't think you could have said any better. And I just love the glow that's on Kevin's face right now because he can, you can absolutely see the, the, the family aspect. And I get that from any interaction I've ever had with Kevin. I don't even know how we met, how we got together from that first BKFC, but. He always looks like a chicken with his head cut off when he's running around. <laughs> he's going, going, going. And he'll always apologize. He will make it a point to come back to you 30 minutes later. He'll see you in passing. He'll be like, so sorry about earlier. Had stuff to do. Had stuff to do. And you're like, dude, it's okay. <laughs> like, I understand at that moment that's that's the the mindset you're in. And that's the, you know, you the go mode. You know, it's just like fight week for you. Except, Britain, you're probably one of the calmest people I've seen on fight week. Um, and that's saying a lot because um, I've interviewed just a few fighters and I've never seen anybody who's just like, oh, it's fight week, you know, just kind of relaxing and eating your spinach salad, what it looked like. You're eating healthy. So she's she's making weight. So we're not worried about that. <laughs> um, so talk about how, 
you know, the two of you entered into that, that management kind of conversation, Kevin, and I'll start with you, Kevin, like not so much that you were already involved with BKFC, but how did that, that approach come where you were like, I want her. You know, um, when I first, I was, I was in Tampa, I was with, uh, Will from, um, uh, from Mississippi. He had a fight going on up here. And, and I found, found out about Britain fighting, and I reached out to her, I think, via Facebook text, and, and I said, hey, man, I'd love to fly out here to Tampa and hang out with these people. people. I think Mayweather is going to be there, something like that. You said that, that yeah, worked, worked with them. It was, it was Mayweather. It was a pretty big name. And, uh, and, uh, and we just kept in touch, and then she moved to Florida for a little bit. Um, and, you know, how can you not love Britain? And I was a fan of And in regards to this, when I saw... It's, it's exactly, exactly what I said from the start when I saw, I saw these puppets gobbling people up, and I, and I, I all I felt was just pit in my stomach. stomach. I just I reached out to my friends. friends. It wasn't it wasn't more fighters. It was more friends. People that I reached out to that I respected, that, that I cared about, that I wanted to be a you know be a part of this team. So, so. Um, you take a look. You take a look at our roster. It's a very eclectic group. It's not. It's, it's not, not um, like, like, like Black Zillion, a certain specific uh, fighting style or something. It's, it's, it's a very effective group, and, and that's because I went up with the people that have, 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 have made an impression on, on me. And I think that makes all the difference in the world, and especially Britain. Again, you're smiling. Uh, you just keep doing it. But it's he saw something in you, you know, something that made him want to pursue you. So I think that's a really cool feeling to have, especially as a fighter, knowing that there's somebody out there not only looking out for your best interest, but moving the the sport forward, the company forward, the division forward, whichever way you want to look at it. But I feel like at the end of the day, it's kind of like big brother, like, Hey, I want to, I want to help you out. I want to, you know, get this uh, where you want to be. Right. I think that I try to tell people that I kind of miss it. And I feel like that's why I'm um, sitting right here. And that's why I made it so far in my um, fight career. And, and I, I tell people, people, I can tell you all the words in the world and make myself sound better and sound myself, sound better, myself but, but you wouldn't really know until you met me in person. And, and then when you meet me in person, everyone gets there like, wow, who is this girl? She's just chipper her out, going, she's, she's not a fighter, she's, she's going to get her ass knocked out, out. just never take it serious. But when they see me in the ring, or they hold pads for me, or I'm sparring in the gym, instantly, I mean, and it, you, you, can just, you can see the look of, like, Oh, shit, yeah. It's hard to explain. You have to be there, but I can see it in their eyes. Like they're looking at me like, you're something like, I feel like Ray, like, like, Ray. like you don't see that feeling. You know, you're talking about the gun, I'm talking about I'll never get it when I'm in the elevator. You look at me, he's like, you're different. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he says, your eyes. He says, I can see it. And he says, I remember that look in someone's eyes one time. That person was me. He says, you were lying a lot of yourself. And, and I think, think that, that when people, people, you know, really get to meet me and, and then see that the, they'll find that I'm, I'm something that is super rare. rare. It's hard to find someone who, who really puts their all passion and the fire inside and the burn that bright. And, and, and I really think that I have. And honestly, I think that that's kind of why I've been in all of the places, just trying to find that place where I'm really going to grow. Because I know that I can be so much bigger than what I already and I'm only 50% of my capability right now. And to see the feeling that people have, I feel like this is really what fighting needs. You know, I'm not a big up in your face. I don't talk shit. I'm not rough and gruff all the time, you know. But I feel like sometimes boxing and fighting needs someone to be behind, you know, behind something that's greater than themselves. Something that like, is a message that anybody can do anything and that you can overcome. You know, trials and tribulations, whatever it is. You don't have to be, you know, somebody that has a lot of money or comes from boxing and fighting the whole life. That if you're willing to put in the hard work, that you will have results. And um, I just think that that's something that I stand for so much bigger that people can see that I'm a real person. I think people really connect with that. So it's exciting to be able to, you know, climb this ladder and, and I, you know, keep going up. up. And I feel like I'm, I'm really only 50% there. So there's so, so much more that I'm ready to give and willing to give and do anything for. I love Kevin. Just mm -hmm. There's not a lot of times that I'm, I'm speechless when somebody talks like that. But you're really, you are that kind of person. And just from the 
15 minutes, you know, let's count it 30, if, you know, the time before Kevin got on the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but really, you you do stand for something else. Like you said, you're not somebody who's who's there to, to talk shit. You're not somebody who's there to, like, be someone you're not. And, I mean, you, you just come across as such a genuine person. And it's right. If I saw you and had no idea who you were, I would never think in a million years you were a fighter. And I think that's the beauty of this sport is that you can't just look at somebody and go, you know, that's that's a fighter there. That's a fighter. You know, it's like watching. Take somebody who's never watched a combat sport before and let them watch somebody who's super muscle, you know, super lean versus somebody who's got a guy and watch them pick the person who's going to win every time. Because they're going, oh, no, no, that guy's that guy's going to burn out like you have these weird you know, misconceptions and, and ideas behind fighting. So. It's really cool that you're just like, I really don't care if they think I'm a fighter. I'm going to get in there and do it. And I mean, honestly, looking just at your bare knuckle record, look who you've had to fight. <laughs> like, you've had to fight some of the toughest women uh, that are in that entire organization. I don't care what weight class. So realistically, like, this is exciting for you to come back and be able to, to shine again because you've done bare knuckle. You've gone to boxing. You've kind of, like you said, you're trying to find your home. So. You know, do you feel that bare knuckle is could be your home or should be your home? Honestly, I think both. I think that it could be, and I think it should be. I'm willing to work hard for it, and I think that I've shown that. I know I fight even if they give it. And I'm a smaller girl, and I don't let that get in my head. I prepare for it the best I can. And, you know, I, I try two different ways. You know, when I went to the bare knuckle the first time, you know, with Beckett, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, you move too much, your feet were too happy, this and that. And then, so the second time, I tried to be more calm on that. So, you know, it, it is a sport to everybody, not just me. And I feel like that's something that, like I said, I could be a real star and should be a real star because I'm not batting this uphill climb with boxing or MMA where, you know, there's so many girls that have been in it so long. I'm starting fresh like everybody else. And, and um, you know, know, why can't I? Like, like that's really what I should be asking is not should I or could I, but why can't I? What's, what's stopping me? You know, the fact that the girls are a little bigger than me, I mean, I can not smart them to be quicker. I can gain. I mean, I, that's not going to bother me. I feel like I face worse outside ring that I have in the ring. So I almost swear it's kind of a break. Um, and and if people don't see that, those guys just pay them, like, that's their bodies, like, you don't, you don't know who's fighting. Fight, people fight fighting cancer, fighting fight other worse things that are outside. Um, so just, just go, go in there and show that you can fight things, things that are bigger than you. I think it can do a lot. And, you know, I've gone out there and I've given them an all to pair. I take things very serious. So even though I'm funny and you'll see me do stupid things, things like TikTok and dancing, and dancing, I take things really, really, really serious at the same time. So I think it's about finding balance. Um, with, with anything, anything you do, do and, and still taking things, things serious, um, which I wish I could do. So, so really, you know, know bare knuckle, I, I don't even think should I, I or could I, but it's more why well, can't I I'm going to, and I'm here to prove that, that I belong here, and I, I long to be that hero, I long to be that different, you know, that different type of fighter that sometimes I think we really need, and I believe in that. Again, speechless, so we're going to switch it over and let Kevin talk a little bit. So I can get my uh, get my bearings back there, but really, everything she said is everything that <laughs> everything that bare knuckle stands for. You know, I I've I've said it before on the show, and I mean, I know when I first saw it, I was like, this I'm gonna hate this. I wasn't a big fan of boxing, still really not, but you know, that's that's a different story. Um, but I remember being at. The first one of the first BKFCs at Tampa, and I heard a knuckle hit a head, and I said, "That is the worst sound I've ever heard in my life." And I said, "I want to see more. Like I have to see more." You know, somebody who's watched MMA for the better part of a decade, who's gone back and watched all the old stuff, all the old Pride fights, you know, some of the old Valley Tudo fights. Like those were brutal. Those were incredibly brutal. And there's something almost poetic about the bare knuckle aspect of it. Because Britain Britain said, you know, it's it's newer to everybody, but at the same time it isn't. You know, this is something that's been going on since the the mid to late eighteen hundreds. The revival. But who would have thought this would be a revival? You know, because people said, you know, 
it took people a long time to really warm up to MMA. There's still people who don't understand it, but I feel like people are warming up to bare knuckle faster than they did MMA because it's something carnal inside of us. It's something, you know, go back to the Coliseum, the gladiators, like people want to watch carnage. They want to watch that. But at this time, now there's skill behind it. It's not just two guys who can box or two girls who can box. Britain said it best. There's a lot more that goes into it than just footwork and, and hitting. You have to be smarter. You have to be, you know, in a sense where you can't be inside your own head too much. So talk about this revival of, you know, the sport, Kevin, where you started as a fanboy and here we are 13, 14 events later, toe the lines out now. Uh, I mean, talk about how just in your experience, how it's grown exponentially and probably more than most people uh, thought it would. Well, well you, you know, know the, the growth, um, the, the, the growth, growth has, has, I mean, you, you really said it for me. Um, the, the UFC, UFC didn't, didn't take off like this. this. Uh, and, and there, there were several, several reasons, several, several factors, factors that it, it did grow. Uh, obviously, it was, it was a new sport. sport. Um, but, but they didn't, didn't have a full talent to necessarily, necessarily go from. They, they went and got, got the guy that, that maybe was, was, was a karate instructor somewhere. And bring a guy in from, from uh, the, the downtown Detroit, Detroit that was a street fighter. And, and then where did they go from there? They didn't really have a full of people. We, we've we got two, three, four pools. We can choose from Muay Thai champions, kickboxers, MMA, pro boxers. And look at that pool we get to choose from. And, and now look at the talent that we have. Who doesn't want to watch it? And that reflects in the numbers and how fast it's grown. And, and I'll tell you, the, 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 the word I used was, was freight train. train. It, it was, was a freight, prior to COVID-19, it was a freight train. train. And I, we, it was going to be our biggest event in Kansas. And, and unfortunately, unfortunately, this happened. This is a, a pandemic that everyone's dealing with. with. It's, a, it's, a, it's a worldwide thing. But it stopped BKFC temporarily in the track. But look at the, the perseverance that... Uh, David, David Coffin had in getting, getting this sport to go, going, going from state to state to state, knocking, knocking on doors, doors, getting the doors, slammed in the face. Well, he, he kept, kept going. going. Well, right now, he's, he's still going. going. Even though there's a pandemic and, and the majority of the shows are shut down, down he's still going. He's, he's still doing his best to put, put on shows, not just, just for the fans, but he knows these fighters need to eat. He knows these fighters. This is what they do. This is who they are. And that's that's if you want to ask me why there's that growth phase like that, that? It's, 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 it's him, him and his team, team you know. Um, I think, uh, uh, I can't really say the name of who called Dave. I was with him one day, and somebody very important in the UFC back in the day called him and said, Man, he goes, This is growing so much faster than the UFC ever did. He goes, What well, you have is firecracker dog. And uh, it, was it was funny to hear that coming from such a, a legend in the sport. So I have but, a feeling uh, I know who that was, but I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, so that's, that's it. it. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, you, you, who, who knows, knows what, where, where, I mean, I know this year, uh, 21, we're going to be in, uh, several, several other countries. countries. That, that's, that's a huge, huge step, step right there. there. Um, you, you know, know and, and, uh, the Total Line, line series, series, that gives us so many more fights, um, that, that we're going to, I mean, literally every two weeks is going to be a bare knuckle fight. And where does it go from there? You know, it, is another, another league startup. Start these, these, these leagues start up as, as a as a segue, segue into um into, into bare knuckle. knuckle. I mean, in a BKFC. So, so uh, just, just hold, hold on tight. tight. That's, That's what, what I can say. Just, just hold, hold on tight right now because it's it's uh, it's, it's, it's the it's, it's the, the show, man. It's the next big thing. Well, I think that's the coolest part about it because again, you know, you said it about pull the talent pool that you had. You're right. The UFC didn't have the talent pool back in 1993. They had single competitor, you know, people coming in, karate, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, street fighting, Tank Abbott, because I'm just going to call Tank Abbott his own sort of sort of thing. But you're right. When it kind of started, you saw a lot of people almost on the tail end of their career. They weren't doing so great in other sports. And you've seen like a rebirth, um, you know, coming out of these. And I, I like the freight train metaphor. And I'm just going to use you just you just had a layover. That's all it was. You had a layover. You had to, you know, change conductors and, and get get back going. I never thought I'd be making train references, but here we are. Um, realistically, though, it's grown so much. And I mean, 
the last event, the fights that are coming up on this one, which will be a great segue for Britain, is really some of the best fights you guys have put on. You know, some of the best matchups there, and they're only getting better. You know, the last event, even with a limited crowd, I think there was one guy who booed the entire event. That's it. There was no boring, no like stalling, no, none of that. There was a just, there's action. And I feel like the two minute rounds, everything about bare knuckle, and I'm sure Feldman says it in the back, you know, like go out there and put on a show. Don't go out there and, you know, run around and try to, you know, do this, do that. Go out there and put on a show. And that last event, in my mind, is probably one of the best events you've had. And I can't wait for this Friday's because really it's, (laughs) it's only getting better. Man, Man, we, we, we say, say that, that in Britain, you've been there for this too. They, they say, say that every event, event and, and it's true. Every, every event is blows you away, and every event is better. You know, you know I, I mean, we've, we've been, been to some, but every every fight is phenomenal. And, and then Daytona, Daytona and, then, and then I mean, it's just one after another. another. I, don't I don't know what's my favorite. What 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 my favorite fights have been there because there's just so many phenomenal fights. There's so many phenomenal fighters. There's there's, there's so, so much character, character in these people, people. Um, and, 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 and I think now now, now what's happening is a lot of people start to relate to it, and, and that's, that's where you're getting people that, that now they want to see their favorite fighters. fighters. They they, they want to see um you know uh, I don't want to throw any names out there. I'll, I'll so say one. They want to see Caveman in there, and they freaking yeah. loved it when he was. So. <laughs> Great example. Great example. I mean, there's so many things the people that, that bring, bring that character, and, and I, I think that's, that's what the, the, the heart, heart soul of Bare Knuckle are, are these are these fighters, and um, it's uh, yeah, yeah I, I I'm blown away, right. brother. All right, Britton, we've let him talk long enough. <laughs> You're the star of this week. I kind of want to get a little bit more of a backstory on you because, again, Bare Knuckle is not something you go into lightly. Um, if I, it looked like you had a a shiner on one of your knuckles already. I'm just going to call it a shiner, but, um, <laughs> so talk about like, how did you end up getting into bare knuckle, um, you know, and boxing and competing in general? I, well, I think that honestly, um, with even with boxing, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that like to roll the dice. And I think sometimes high is high reward. And, um, you know, then at the end, that's kind of like how boxing is, you know, for me, they say, you know, if you hang out at a bar shop, I'm not going to get your hair cut. And so I just made it a point to be in a boxing gym the most I could have ever been out there. I never, always been that dedicated. You know, any gym that I've been at, you know, I, I don't miss days. I've been there every day. I'm the first one in and the last one to leave. And I've always had that mentality since I started. And um, I think that if I, I took up these risks in boxing, and I went and bought um, an income for her walk in terms of she's gorgeous, she's a girl. And I think that one was really what solidified my, my, my name into the fight, and that's what put respect on my name. And actually, when Bobby was there at the fight, he saw the fight as well. And I would kind of, you know, be the opponent, the one coming in that, you know, was just supposed to help her, her record. And, you know, I remember. So classic, classic great. great. And I remember in, in the, the ring, smiling. Like, like I, I smiled when I was in the ring. ring. I was like, oh shit, I'm actually gonna do this. Like, like I can beat this, this girl. And um, you know, you know I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't did win. win. Um, it was a, you know, a loss. But I'm telling you, the whole fourth round, round, everybody was cheering my name. I heard it. I had to do that. I'm in Delaware. Nobody knows me. And, and I'm not the, the, the favorite, you know, I'm not predicted to win. And I can hear people yelling and shouting my name and to go and do it. And, and afterwards, you know, I was just given so much respect for her. her. And, and then Roy, you know, came over, over and was like, dude, you are the toughest girl, like, hand down. So they actually invited me uh, to come stay down there, and I was a sparring partner. For the one I've heard, we're gonna have to take advantage of that by rolling the risk. So it kind of shows that you know, even it sucks that I lost, but like you don't have to look at losing as a loss or a failure, but a lesson learned and possibly opening the door. So from that fight, um, people really, I really earned the reputation of being extremely tough and durable and hitting really hard. Because when I hit her, she did not like. She, she did not want to fight. I didn't want to smile. I was like, oh, 
this girl is kind of worried, like, let's, let's go. go. So, when the very uncle um, asked me to buy it at first, I was like, you know, I'm a really appreciative person of everybody who said it's not my style, it's disrespectful. And I said, thank you for thinking of me, but I'm going to focus on boxing. I had a big boxing fight in Atlantic City. And, and then, then um, after, after that, they put that together, like, oh, well, that boxing match is done, I'm ready. You ready to fight And I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, like, like, you know, yeah, I focus on boxing. boxing. I'm like, well, well here's, here's the deal, deal Britt. You have, you have a really, really good opportunity. You should really, really think it. it. And I, you know, at first, first I was like, look, I don't want to be, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to be the best I can. Like, I'm not going on TV to get beat up. Like, it's just not, not me. I don't care how much they beat me. You're like, no, Brittany, you are something special. You're something different. You're something different. And I think that you can go in there and shock the world. You're your opportunity. So, you know, I mean, when you put it like that, it's like, oh, you know, 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 so, so roll the dice, time with high war, and I decide that, you know what, again, why can't I, why can't I train really hard and, 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 and push myself beyond reasonable doubt to go in there and show people what I really am made of, that that fire is something that's different and special. Um, I went to Bare Knuckle, and, and with the best fight, and I tell him, like, even through the loss, you know, you know, it really, really does fucking hurt, you know, and it, it just stings a lot as far as, like, that. you know, I really, really <coughs> believe there was one <coughs> fight in my lifetime that I really believed I was going to win, it was that one, like, I had 100% self-belief, but, you know, the way I look at it is, I wouldn't go back and change the thing, I would have done it, you know, I would have done it, and now, now I'm like, like look, look, you know, I have more experience, I'm 10 times, times better, better. I, I think, think that I'm way, way better than what I thought back, and that says, says a lot, because, again, again if I could go, go back, back and change it, I would do the exact same thing, thing. Um, as, as far, far as, as taking the fight, you know, no, of course, course I would, I would change a few things to win, but, you know, I don't regret taking the bare knuckle fight, and then, you know, looking at it with Christine, you know, again, a super unfortunate, but, I don't, I don't find myself, myself saying, oh, man, I should never do that. I don't think I'm thinking about that girl. I don't think that. And I, I, I never thought that. So, so the, the fact, fact is, 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 like, like you know, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to win. 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 And i am going to win 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 and i am going to win
I'll talk on the phone. She's like, yeah, yeah bitch. Blah, blah, blah. blah. I, I threw her mouth. Like, like, it's like, it's talking to me. She's, she's like, yeah. And she's just, just covering her mouth. And I was like, oh, I'm talking on the phone. I wasn't talking to you. I didn't mean any disrespect. But she followed me. And I'm telling her I was on the phone. And I was like, yo, I'm going to turn around and knock this prostitute bitch out. If she keeps talking to me, she knows who she's talking to. And thank God, I was talking to her. And they're like, no, that's normal. Just be the bigger person. I'm telling you, she followed me for like, a minute. a minute, like, like she followed me for like a hundred feet at least, just running her mouth, mouth. and I swear it was the hardest thing to do, but I just felt like, like you know, learning, learning yourself, yourself control and discipline, like, like I knew that if I punched her one time, time, she'd probably fall down the floor and have a heart attack, and then I'd go and get, get to deal with that, that be in trouble, so, so I just kept walking, and she eventually left me alone, so I do have, I do have that control and discipline, you know, but, you know, if it, if it was, was up, up to me and I didn't, didn't have consequences, I would have nailed her face. <laughs> Kevin's down there uh, just going, oh my god. Loving it. Loving it. So, before I got too far, I love what you said about not going back and changing anything. Uh, because you said, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, I'd go back. I wouldn't have taken that fight. I was sick. I was, my leg was hurt or this or that. But... The fight you took against Beck was a split decision loss. It wasn't like you just got destroyed. You know, that was a fight that was hotly contested for your first bare knuckle fight against somebody who had been in the MMA game for quite some time. I love that you said, obviously, you changed the outcome and changed a couple of things, but you took a huge risk there. And I feel like it's paid off because here we are still talking. You know, that fight was two years ago. And you talk about how much better you've gotten in two years. That scares me flat out scares me so talk about your fight this week um you know we're three days away um and you're fighting somebody who's also new to the bare knuckle game so talk a little bit about you know your preparation and uh, you know i don't ask for game plans or you know if you study tape but you know it's been a couple of years you know like about a year and a half since your last bare knuckle fight so talk about you know the time in between and and your journey back here. Right. And, and even though, like I said, I, you know, I've been busy, been busy so, so even I, it, it does suck to not, you know, know to have to take that one all away from bare knuckle, but it wasn't, wasn't like, like I was doing anything. I was, I was really, really active, active, you know, in boxing and fighting, and I've never, never loved gym. gym. I've never been out of the gym, you know. know? And, and that's, you know, no fighting, box, box, whether it's boxing or MMA, I've always been in the gym. Yeah. So I feel like um, some of my biggest things, like, like when I go back and watch the bet fight, fight, you know, a lot, lot of people um, say my chin is up high, I kind of wear my elbows, things, things like that. that. And, and I don't, want, you know, know, I watch those videos and film them on my own self, and I'm like, man, I do do that. And, and now, now, you know, know I really feel proud of myself that I feel like those are things like that have the problems I have. So I'm excited for people to see that, that like, like, the, the progress and, and, and just the, like, like I'm, I'm just so ready, ready for the victory. I think that's, that's why I'm glowing, glowing and I'm excited because I know what people are going to see. And, and it's, it's going to be phenomenal, like, like with the, the skills, skills that I've been working, working on. Um, um, especially with, like, like defense and, and reaction, you know, know trying to, to, to see things but move and, and, and be very, you know, know statistically accurate on what, what works. works. And I, I feel, feel like I've put a lot of effort into learning those strategies and think perfecting that. that. Um, you know, I've worked, I've worked on a few other things, things that, that I was really, really fortunate to have, have an amazing coach, coach to teach me the, you know, different aspects and philosophies on when to throw this and what, what to do with this kind of situation. So I think that, um, my school bag, so to speak, is just, just expanded, expanded so much. Um, with the back fight, to be honest with you, I really trained myself and was in a YCA. I got, a, you know, my coach at the time. He held out for me two times a week for 45 minutes. And that's really the training I had for the back fight. fight. So, so like now, it's like, like, dang, like, like I'm sparring every day. Um, I'm tired of sparring, skills sparring, actually sparring, like, People, people that are way better than me, people, people that are looking at have all different shapes and styles, and, and I just feel like, you know, South Hall, with the dog, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Like, man, I've just been really in there fighting, and that, that was one, one of my things, things from the Vegas, Vegas fight, fight too. Someone said, I'm going to make sure you run and spar. Those are the two most important things. And, 
You know, no, I've always been challenging myself when I go on gym, I see the guy sparring, doing something, I get ready, and I'm like, hey, let me, can I jump in with you? Um, so but I'm really, like, ready, where you can hear some girls, girls that are like, all right, get ready, go in, so-and-so, and I'm like, oh, you know, no, like, mm -hmm. dang, he's really good, though, what if I get hurt? And I'm just, like, like already ready, ready, asking for those rounds. So, so I think that, that shows the difference, too, in my willingness. So, so I learn and, and be willing, willing to learn. So, so I'm highly teachable. It's like, like I soak it all in. in. So, so anyway, I, I think the 13th, this Friday, Friday I, that's, that's why I'm so excited and relaxed now because I've grown, grown so much, much more confident, confident with what I'm able, able to do and, and see and, um, the, the new weapons, weapons that I have, um, which I, I think, think are extremely effective. So. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what, what I'm excited, excited to show. show. Like, you know, like, like I said, it's kind of scary to think about. about. Man, yeah, the next fight, fight I think I did, I did really shock the world and look good. But holy cow, look at all, <laughs> look at all the <laughs> things that I was doing that, that I could have fixed that would have made, made a big difference. difference. And, and now, now I feel like those things are fixed. So, so man, man, like, I'm just ready. You know, I'm not saying that I'm going in there and I'm. You know, you know, looking for the, the knockout, knockout who, who isn't, who doesn't want that, that. But I really feel like I tried that aspect before, before and sometimes that would get you caught up. So I feel like seeing, seeing it and waiting and, and looking for what's, what's there, you know, it's, it's going to come to you with your patience. And, and I think that I've shown that as far as, you know, being, being in, in the game, game hanging around the bar shop. So I'm looking for that win. You know, I've been around long enough and I keep coming back, so I don't have that quick mentality in me. So I really think I've got something to prove this time. I also feel like we should just give you the nickname Barbershop at this point <laughs> with the story that you just gave. I did. I did just come from the one. Look at my, got my hair done. So. No, no, I'm not Barbershop. So we'll switch over to Kevin. I know I, he looks like you look so tired, and I appreciate you taking the time, brother. So talk about like how exciting it is to hear a fighter talk the way Britain is talking about, not only about the organization, but being one of your fighters. Um, you know, just that, like, joy. Like, what is that? How does that make you feel, um, you know, seeing her like this just a couple yeah. of days before a fight? It's yeah, short, short and sweet. sweet. I, 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 I put it, that's, that's everything, everything you look for in a fighter. fighter. You've, you've heard, heard, you've you've heard, heard everything she said. She, she lives this. this. And, and she, she, she said, I deserve this. this. And, and I'm going to get this. this. Not I think I can or I might. I'm, I'm going, going to get this. this. I'm going to get to the next level. level. And, that's and that's it, man. man. It's short and sweet. She, she, she lives this. this. And, um, and and it's so much fun. Look at the passion. Look at, passion. Look at, look at her face. Look at the excitement. And, and, and also, like, like you said, said Matt, look at how relaxed she is. This is a major fight coming up. This is this is her. This is the worldwide stage again for Britain to go on top. She's going to be on top. She's going to win. It's going to be a great win. Um, But but that's that's... And I like the way you put it, you know, short, and sweet to the point, but you're right. The relaxation, the, the joy, you know, you see fighters that are just like, they hate doing interviews. They're like, it's fight week. I just want to focus on this. And I feel like so many fighters and I know I'll bring up Rickles just because it's the one that comes to mind, you know, him joining BKFC, but him and I have talked over the years. It's been probably seven years that we've been talking at this point. And he'll always mention how mental this sport is. And I feel like bare knuckle is even more mental because in an MMA fight, you get taken down. You have a moment to kind of think about what's going on. You have a moment to try and recover, try and figure out what's. you don't have that in bare knuckle, especially in bare knuckle, because that ring isn't that big. That space isn't that big. And your opponent isn't going to waste any time because you don't have a five minute round for you to kind of warm up. and and get into your groove. And a lot of fighters have talked about that too, how that's one of the hardest things to come overcome is that, that two minute, you know, that goes by so fast. Um, and I mean, I know as a, a spectator, a journalist, whichever you want to call it, a fan, like it goes by so fast. You're like, what round was that? Like you lose yeah. track of it. So I can't imagine what it's like for you guys to be in there and going, okay, okay. We, we got, we, you know, you're not thinking about the time. And I feel like a lot of bare knuckle fighters, they're not trying to coast by and, and, and get a decision. Um, I think I've seen more stoppages than decisions, which is amazing to watch um, because you have two people who want to go out there. And especially 
you know, Britain, like you said, you're looking for the knockout, but not, you know, you're a fighter hands, like 100% fighter, because that's what you have to do. You know, you see a lot of fighters. It's kind of like watching white belts in the gym in jujitsu, you know, a white belt that's got the energy of like 200 people. And they're like, go, 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 go. And as they progress throughout the belt system or throughout your fight career, you calm down. You slow down, and it's not because of time. It's not because of age. It's not because of injuries. It's because, yeah, yeah it's that mental aspect. So, <laughs> oh, poor cat. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to give you crap. Um, but really, like, I love that you can you can both relate to that, and I, I can see it in Britain's face, too, because that's what it is. And since I've done it every episode, I think, um, I got my blue belt in June. So that's how I feel like when I see these other the white belts, you know, I'm I'm five months removed, but I see it was like the day I got it. It was like somebody was like, hey, here's another door to open. Just watch. Don't do anything. Just watch. And it's changed kind of every aspect of it. So, you know, I feel Britain saying, you know, because every fighter says, oh, I'm, I'm the best this time around. I'm the best this time around. It's all about the circumstances surrounding it. It's about the people you have around. It's the managers, specifically in this case, because I, I feel it's safe to say if Kevin was around when you first started, you probably would have never left Bare Knuckle. Like, you probably would have stayed, um, but your journey wouldn't be the same. So it's like one of those things where having somebody looking out for you um, is very important in this sport, especially with everything that's going on. So, um, really it's just exciting to see how it's progressed and to see somebody like yourself who really has that mindset of i lost okay what do i do next what do i have to fix and you know they say you said it before and it's been said countless times you learn more from a loss than a win you don't need to be a fighter to understand that logic um but i feel like what you do with that loss what you do with that setback moving forward shows the character and the kind of person that you are. Exactly. Thank you. Definitely, because there's just more to go, you know, we're definitely, definitely looking for that winning champion status that, you know, I said, it's a fighter, you know, being, being a real fighter, fighter sometimes, sometimes, you know, I think that, uh, Belton said it, and, you know, sometimes, sometimes you're hammer, sometimes you're the nail, you know, but, but, you know, just go out there and give it your all, and you're a good fighter, and, you know, people and the fans and that's, that's why people go to EKSE is because you know, they have respect for the fighters to give it their all no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. And I love I love that analogy, too. I'm an, I, Obviously, I always love analogies, but it is. And Joey Beltran's the perfect example of somebody who's been both. I mean, the guy fought at, like, five different weight classes. I know it wasn't five, but really, he's fought all over the place. And he found his home at Bare Knuckle, and he just looks better and better. So, you know, it's exciting to see, you know, Kevin said, the pool that you've brought in, these guys know how to fight. The hardest part for them isn't learning how to fight or learning how to adjust. It's making sure that people like Tiago Alves don't throw a leg kick during the middle of a fight. And I think he said that after that fight with Julian, where he was like, the hardest part was just remembering not to be able to throw a leg kick. Uh, so, you know, so many times, you know, there's so much difference. So uh, what I'll save this for, it's getting a little bit later. Um, I want to talk about the sponsors, you know, the people that are getting you through, not just the sponsors, but. Britain now the training partners, the coaches, and who's really a big part of, um, you know, keeping you in this game and keeping you focused besides Kevin, of course. Right. right. And, and so sorry, I think I had my phone's phone got to get low on battery, so I'm going to put it, it on charger. charger. But basically, basically um, you know, the sponsors that I have, um, Aston Service, Service Center, um, Ricky, Ricky L. Tuck and Sun Wood, Wood Products, Mass Bout, um, Smith Brothers, Combat Sports, of course. Um, and, and you know, you know Lux Boxing Gym, gym and my coach, coach Marcus Love, everyone in the gym, you know, you know I, I teach kids, kids boxing on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and Thursdays from 5 to 6, six and they're so pumped for it, and they give me so, so much joy and motivation to it. it. Um, one, one of my sparring partners, a girl named Keisha Bradley, Bradley, she just went to Tennessee and was totally the underdog for that, that fight. fight. And no one knew that she was training with me and I was a sparring partner. She went, went up there and totally upset Tennessee, beat the girl, like, walkingly beat her. 
and, and she, she came, came back to the gym, gym and told me, yo, Britt, she was like, like that, that girl, every, every time that girl hit me, I kept thinking, oh my God, Britt hits me way harder than this. So I could take <laughs> and it. And I was like, oh, yo. Yeah. So, so I have to give, give her a shout, shout out, big shout out for that. that. Just, you know, know that we've been pushing each other really hard this month, not only for her fight, but, you know, it's been good work for my fight. So, so um, it's, it's just, just been, been like, like that's why I'm in the good, good mood. That's, that's why I'm so relaxed. That energy is like everything. everything. You know, when, when you give and, and you give and you give, that's, that's when people, people, you know, they see that and they give, give back to you in the way they, they can. can. And that's, that's, you know, in, in the form of like belief and support and all those people are behind me. So I got to thank them a big time. You know, they're all excited to copper kettle. I work. So that's another thing with this crazy COVID and Corona. Uh, like, like, I, I really, really gave up, you know, working, working because I really wanted fighting to be my full-time career and job, but it's so hard as a fighter, and you know, these fighters go out last minute, and the fight cancel last, last minute because of Corona and COVID, so I just wasn't, wasn't making any money, and it, it was hard on, so, so anyways, I have a job at Copper Kettle now, and Man, Man, I, I love it there, too. Like, like the people, people there, there, like, when they find out, they had to get so much respect and support, and they want to play it on their TVs, they download the app, I have you know, he came, came down, down by a VIP, VIP table all the way from Virginia, Virginia to come down to Miami. So the support, support is unreal. So, so huge you thank you to all, all the people. people. And that's awesome to have that um, support because I feel like not a lot of businesses. I mean, now I think it's just they're happy to have, you know, hands. You know, they're happy yeah. to have people willing to work. But for them to be able to support you, knowing what you do um, and wanting to showcase that to people, I think that's pretty awesome. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So cool. So I'm glad you were able to talk about all them. So Kevin, who do you want to thank for everything that's been going on? Um, and, uh, you know, you can throw your little plug out there for the Smith brothers combat because you guys are growing exponentially. And, uh, I'm really excited to see, uh, I saw the, the expansions coming at your building. So yeah, it's a, uh, it, it started growing too fast, and growth has to be controlled. Um, to do it right, you have to do things in phases. Um, and, and that means bring on the proper team. It, it doesn't mean bring on bodies. Um, it, it needs to be people that are passionate about what we're doing. Um, because, you know, like... like uh, David Feldman and, and David Feldman Jr. and... These, These guys, guys, they, they don't, don't want to um, give, give up certain, certain things that they do because they know that they do it right. Um, it's not that they don't trust anybody, they, 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 they do it right. I do things a certain way, and and I want to make sure that I give everything. I want to make sure Smith Brothers, Combat Sports, whether it's the gym, the training center, the consulting, the management, it gives everything. And so, yeah, it's, I've, 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 I've actually slowed it down a bit. I've got... Um, Six, six agreements, agreements in place right, right now with uh, six gyms in six different states where we're, we're going to have Smith Brothers. Brothers. Did, Did you guys lose my voice? I'm still here? Are we good? Um, uh, Smith, Smith Brothers Combat Sports, Sports Training Facility. So, um, in, in these gyms where, where these guys are either a uh, past um, a coach of a, a bare knuckle guy, guy or have been involved with... Um, um, sorry, I've got my daughter trying to pass me something very sweet right now. Yeah, yeah so, 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 so that's the growth. growth. I mean, and it's, it's not, not just randomly going out and getting a, a gym, a gym name. You know, the, the, some of the best names in the business that I'm speaking with right now, and, and, and both boxing and, and, and MMA, and, 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 and uh, even dealing with the Muay Thai guy. And, what, you know, some, some of the fighters that I work with have their own gyms, and it's, they've, they've been, been there, there, they've done that, they've been in the square circle. They fought bare knuckle. What, what better, better place to, to, to send people that are interested in not just training, but you know, there's so many people you, you, you'll see it online. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do, do it. I'm going to jump and I'm going to be a fair enough fighter. fighter. My first response is how many amateur fights, fights, how many pro fights, fights you know, what you have. Oh, oh, I've never had any amateur fights. fights. I've never had any pro fights, but I do. do. And, and right off the bat, you know, yeah, I have no problem sending to a training facility. But, but it's, 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 it's that's, that's what they need, need. And, and that's, that's what people need, need is to be able to have a place to go. Um, let's, let's say let's say Britain uh, decides to relocate to California. California. We've not not saying it would happen, but there's we've, we've got, got a, a gym with JC Lama 
who's, who's uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, know Jay-Z's Jay-Z's a killer, killer in every in every aspect, and he's, he's a great bare knuckle fighter. And there's a gym in Bakersfield, California, that we could say, hey, there's a place for you to work out at. So, um, and and now we're this is becoming international. Uh, you, uh, you know, know who we've added to our, to our team, team um, with, with, with Tyler Goodjohn, and, and uh, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's getting, getting worldwide attention now. now. So, so making sure that, um, that we, grow, we grow with Bare Knuckle Fight, Fight Championship. Championship. We, we grow, grow at the pace that we need to not too fast. fast. So, so, so that's where we are right now. We're a gym. We're a management company. We're consulting. We're coaches, coaches, we're fighters, we're, we're, we're a family. family. That's, That's what it is. is. And I think what it what it all comes down to is is the family aspect. Because I think you've said that more than any other word tonight. It's just it's been family and that's what fighting should be. That's what you know, it like you said, it's not a contract, it's an agreement. You know, and having you know, putting that right out there and saying, If you don't do this, this is it. You know, not I own you. That, that was still shocking to me Britt, that you're like that you even had to deal with that um but it is it is a family and you see that with everybody that interacts with bare knuckle you see that with the fighters um you know i've heard fighters talk bad about every organization that's on the planet and i've heard people who work for those organizations talk about how it's the worst place to work on the planet and i don't get that with a single bare knuckle guy i've talked to i don't get that with a single bare knuckle employee like media it doesn't matter. Like they either like it or they don't. And that's, that's fine. But really at the end of the day, it seems like you guys have created something that needed was needed in the combat sports arena, something that was needed in a time like this, especially, you know, where you can have people to rely on, but at the same time, you got to put food in the table. You know, you've got kids, Britain. I'm pretty sure you have kids too. We talked about the snow globe. So, uh, yeah. You got you got to do what you have to do, and I love that Kevin's there to support, Bare Knuckles there to support. And hopefully, the world is there to support. You know, a uh, late Friday the thirteenth we have coming up here in November, so it still feels like uh, October hasn't ended, which is fine by me. Um, but really, it's a family. So we'll round out the show with one last thing: in the main event, Palomino or Eilers. Which way we lead in? I'll start with you, Britton. Uh, you know, honestly, I, 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 I think it's going to be a good fight. I really do. I think it's going to be a good fight. Um, I, I really don't even want to say exactly who, who I think Scott and I think they're both going to be put up a good fight. So I'll let like Kevin answer that one. <laughs> okay, so I've got the perfect answer. Jim Ehlers, uh, the, the bare knuckle beast. Is, is uh, a, a guy, guy that I've got to know and become a friend, friend with, and you know what he does out there, there and he's, uh, uh, he is a beast. Um, on, on the other side, side of the canvas, canvas is a legend. Um, Palomino, the baboon, he, he's, he's, he's a legend. legend. He's, he's a killer. killer. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't want to choose. I'm not going to choose. I'm not. I'm not going to give you that. I'm not going to give you satisfaction. Um, there, it's it's going to be a great fight. fight. It's, it's going to be explosive. explosive. It's going to be a great fight. fight. Um, and, and, and either, either way, is uh, uh, there's, there's, as, as long as these guys, guys go to war, war there's, there's, there's no loser. And I really don't think that's even a, a question. So to wrap everything up, Britton, thank you so much. It was absolutely a pleasure to meet you. I wish I would have got to see you while you were here in Florida. But next, next event, I think we'll uh, definitely have to touch base. Kevin, thank you so much for facilitating this. Um, really, thanks for being on the show. I know most people don't ask you to be on the show, but I mean, really, for what you do for these fighters, um, the organization, and the community at this point, you know, a community that I grew up in, really. So um, it's pretty exciting and pretty awesome to see. So on behalf of Combat Press, I forgot everything I was going to say. <laughs> Uh, EpicJitsTees.com for the awesome logo and shirt. Uh, La Barba Cubano for making my beard still look good and smell like pumpkins, even though it's not October. Um, check it out. Appreciate you guys. And, Britton, I know you said you're not looking for the knockout, but get that knockout on Friday. I'm, I'm getting that knockout. <laughs> so, on behalf of all of us at the Quick and Out MMA podcast, a.k.a. me, have a great night, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you.